Hello. There is little else that excites me more than the feeling of discovery when embarking upon a new adventure. RimWorld is usually about a colonist trapped on the ground, trying to get back out into space. Instead, what about being trapped in space and trying to get back to Earth? For a new challenge, I decided to embark upon a new adventure with RimWorld's Save Our Ship derelict ship start. But instead, I blew up the ship because it was too vast and complex to learn all at once. No, I wanted the ship to come down to its bare bones, its most granular building blocks. I'm calling this my Skyblock. The challenge is to use the scattered remaining resources left by the last ship in order to create a functioning space station and return to Earth's surface. Now we've just spawned in, but we need to be economical with our supplies. Hom Tanks is currently in an EVA suit that's going to keep him alive while he's still in the vacuum of space, but it's rapidly deteriorating after all the explosions. Almost the entire ship was destroyed, but there's still a lot we can salvage from. We're going to allow everything to start. There, now that we've allowed all of the supplies, Space is very dangerous. If exposed to the vacuum, you'll die in about 15 seconds. Experiments have actually taken place where a man was exposed to a vacuum for a short period of time. His saliva on his tongue began to boil. We need to clear out these airlocks and supply the compartment with oxygen. He doesn't have a lot of time and he's pretty stable. He's also happy to be in space, so I'm just going to set him to work for as long as possible until he gets his quarters set up. First things first, let's haul this steel out of the airlocks. That's one of them. And now this slag chunk. And now that the doors are cleared, it's locked at least from the vacuum outside. Though there's still no air, we'll need our life support system. We'll need to reinstall this lamp first. There it is. And the next Next most urgent task is to take this life support system and install it here. He can just grab that from space. Now we'll refuel this chem fuel powered generator to get that online. And that gets the plants working. We're generating oxygen. And while the atmosphere in here is breathable, it's still freezing. Just as a starter colonist on land would have trees and water to pick from to build his own base, we have steel and plasteel out in the vacuum of space. We still have yet to mitigate the temperature and it's freezing inside. But some heat is being given off by the chem fuel generator. We need to make this environment livable for someone without an EVA suit, as ours is about to expire. The first thing we'll die of would be cold. We need some heaters to combat that and not die. The meals have also floated away. We'll need to collect outside of our ship if we want to survive much longer. One would think that heaters would be enough to protect you from cold. Well, no. Heat can also kill us. As it turns out, if we don't have a way of getting rid of the heat, we will literally cook in here like a microwave. But we're going to need to power all of this, so two more chem fuel generators it is. While it might not be so fast, it's going to make its way up to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will go beyond that. Right now we have no way of getting heat out of our ship, it just stays in there. But in fact, our power grid isn't completely connected to our heat sinks. Now we have these three, power, heat, oxygen, but we don't have any way of getting rid of the heat. We almost have enough to create a sustainable environment for life. So before we do anything else, we'll need to install powered ship hull where we had unpowered ship hull. That's good, now our heat sinks are working. The indoors is finally livable, now at 20 degrees. And it's a good start, but we don't really have that much time. We have only so much chem fuel and our suit is running out of condition every second. And with a little bit more work, we'll have one more room for our life. Each room is going to need to serve several purposes at first. Now with the room surrounded, we can add hull plating inside. And with just a bit of steel and plasteel, we shut out the vacuum of space. Tanks is now in a bad mood and is exhausted, but this will be his last task before we can have him take off his suit and relax. And there, just finishing up that room. It looks like this place is sealed off. Now with all that work done, we can allow him to come inside and take a nap. This room may still be cold, but he's now safe to remove his gear in his bedroom. We'll leave that on the floor because we don't want it degrading anymore. And we might need it later on for outdoor repairs. And while he sleeps, the outer room should start to warm up. There it goes now, it's pushing towards zero degrees, and this is safe to walk in now. We can haul the meals back to the ship, and that's the last of them. Now we have one surviving horseshoe pin, which we'll install, otherwise we can't really go outside for any recreation. We'll become kind of stir-crazy in here for a while. Now we'll set up a new area called Life Pod, where we'll allow him to walk around inside. This is kind of how I imagine life would be if I lived in a tiny house. First I'd walk over here, and clean. Then I'd walk over there and clean the other spot. After that, I'd probably go to bed and think about owning a larger house. Already he's getting chilly in this one compartment, but the temperature is going up from the other room. Even in space, he will need horseshoes, yes. 
Don't question it. Now we'll start by reinstalling this lamp. It seems to be hooked to the wrong power grid. And it looks like we got a red lamp for this room. I didn't even really intend that. I guess it was just what was left over. Now, as it stands, we're burning fuel. We have only the chem fuel that's left here, plus whatever we can find outside. If we want to get ourselves an unlimited source of power, we're going to need to research solar power. And if we want that, we're going to need a high-tech research bench and a multi-analyzer. Every second, we're burning fuel and using up food, too. A quick check shows that we need components and gold. We're going to need to make another spacewalk now. We'll let him gather the required materials before we set off to work. So gathering the components from outside, we start our build, leveling in construction, and gathering the necessary components. First item on our research will be life support. This leads up to EVA suits, and we can use the last of our hyperweave to create a replacement if we need it. The research begins, but we don't really have anything else to do. We just have to wait and hope that no other ships pass by. The EVA suits removed to preserve condition as long as possible. And though we're alone, research is made short work of. We're in an advanced civilization having made it to space, and our researcher has the maximum skill. He shouldn't have any trouble keeping up. After all, there isn't much else to do in space. That's enough research. Next will be a quick detour to solar panels. Not only does this give us solar generators for the ground, but also solar generators for a ship. There's a mountain of research ahead of us. Normally, on a colony, this would be a peaceful time, but we're running out of meals. And so far, we don't have any way of making more yet. We have to work fast. Thankfully, solar panels can give us renewable energy with only the sun. And we can use smelters to make use of these steel slag chunks. Donning the EVA suit, it's time to make another trip out, and that's enough for a smelter. You begin this work, making a few spacewalks, until at last we have enough for solar generators. We can build these on the bottom end of our ship. Now we have all three and they're hooked into our power grid. In the morning, they come out and they start generating solar power. It's not a lot, but it's pretty reliable in space. But our gear is also getting lower in quality. We don't have much time left. But the good news is that the sun has unlimited power for us. I'm willing to take full advantage of it with an array of three more solar panels. And yet, it's a waste if we can't make the best use of it. At the end of the day, the solar panels retract. Batteries will be the next quick research project. As long as we do a little bit of research each day, we'll keep our mind sharp. And since we're going to need a lot more power, we research capacitor arrays. This won't be our only project. Once we store power, then we're going to need to start growing food before we can get any further in our journey. Only once we've set up these basic necessities of life, then can we start worrying about defending ourselves and finally getting back to Earth. The human body wasn't meant for space, it evolved on Earth. And so we just kind of complete work marathons, staying up as long as we want, welding and working on the ship, trying to collect our resources before our suit springs a leak. It's more welding, but we're going to need room for a space garden out here. The next morning we trace out a design for what will be the ship's grow room. This is where we'll have crops. We'll worry about propulsion and fighting later on when we get to that. Hard to believe it, but it's been 15 days since our expedition launched, and an entire season has passed. We're still trapped out here. Next, it's time to restore hull plating. In both rooms, there's plenty to do. With that, we need to be mindful because we've been through many of the materials on the outside of the ship. And don't forget, we still need a rocket to get back down to Earth. The spare room is completed, and we're now ready to set up our capacitors. With that, the room is sealed and shut. It's safe to install one last heater, or two to be safe. Now the temperature is certainly low, but it's rising, and it's creating an environment livable for human life. Like a squirrel gathering nuts for the winter, we're now retreating indoors, and we'll complete the last of our work in here. Now we'll move on to the indoor phase of our journey. But now we have a new problem. We have only 20 meals left. My three greatest fears are running out of food, running out of power, or just being stuck up here without the means of reproducing anything. And for some reason, our power is dropping, so it's best to take out some insurance for these emergencies with new power. Our sun lamp is extremely power demanding. This thing is like a small city. We need capacitors to store the power. We'll start with a small capacitor. Capacitors have a huge energy supply, and we can keep drawing on them for a long time, even if something happens to our grid. Our helmet, though still there in case of an emergency, is really too low to use outside of our ship. If Tanks is exposed for even a few seconds to the vacuum, he'll die immediately. Next is a trip down hydroponics. Next will be another fabrication bench. We'll need to use this to craft another EVA suit for our major constructions outside the ship. But there's also a new danger. We aren't draining heat in one room and it's starting to cook like an oven. This is an immediate danger. Just in case of the worst case scenario, we'll put on the EVA suit. This is a time sensitive task. We'll need to reopen the ship and add in two more radiators. So we retire our old EVA suit and helmet, and we begin crafting anew. 
We have strong crafting skill though, and we managed to get excellent quality. But now we're down to only 13 meals, we're really running low here. And since it's in perfect condition and I think this will last us till the end, we'll leave him in an AVA suit and helmet for most of the rest of the time. As it stands, we still don't have any way of moving the ship. We complete hydroponics research, and it's the fresh feeling of striking out on a new project. I have made metal into an environment sustainable for plant life to grow. It's warm and safe in here, and the light will come on tomorrow to help them start growing. And as they say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. When life gives you hyperweave sleeping rolls, make hyperweave EVA suits to walk around in. It's the only cloth that we really have available. We have enough to sustain life in here as it stands right now, but we still need to get back down to Earth, and there's more metal and plasteel outside. We need to collect it to create our shuttle bay. Now if I may use this word, it's a comfortable life on the ship, and then we'll be getting back down to Earth after some research. And luckily, no other ships have tried to kill us during our time in space. The suit is completed, of normal quality. That's passable and it'll work. With the suit on, we can gather the last of the supplies. And Tanks also has recreational opportunities out there. We gather the last of the resources from outside of the ship. And before you know it, it's going to be time for our first harvest. So we'll get an oven ready. And we'll plan to stockpile the rice right in front of it. It's a simple task, but it's important. And if we can, we'll want to save some of these packaged survival meals for later. Now our capacitor is fully charged, and this takes a long time, this is no small task. We've finished harvesting our rice, we didn't botch that much of it, and it's time to cook simple meals. Now he's sustaining his own life. And oddly enough, the advanced components do deteriorate. I don't know why without the exposure to oxygen, but we need to bring them in fast. It's just a matter of bringing things inside. Now it's a lot of crafting, most of our research is done. But the good news is that we have tons of steel and plasteel, and these are the base resources needed to make more complex components that we're lacking. Fortunately, it's not that many advanced components to make. You could live a life up here above the earth. But the sad news is that you couldn't get down if we didn't have enough to make a shuttle bay and you'd be trapped forever. Which would be horrible. Absolutely horrible. I suppose until all of the components broke down, you would, uh, need to repair the ship, otherwise you would just slowly suffocate up in space. I have to say, I wish I did a better job organizing the resources. I was in a bit of a panic at the beginning, but I wanted to make sure I didn't run out of oxygen or heat. But it's time for some smelting. We need to take account of just how many resources we have to get back down to the earth. But just think of all that we've accomplished. Creating a pot of oxygen in a massive vacuum, establishing enough heat for life and to take off one's suit, food, plant growth, power, fuel, and now we even have a surplus. I think I can now see why astronauts are at high risk of going crazy in outer space. They pick mentally stable people for this job. All of the time, which has amounted to nearly one year, seems like only one day that has passed since I've been up here. All just one extremely long, interesting afternoon. Our last task will be to sharpen the saw intellectually. We've let enough time go by without doing any researching or thinking, and we still need rocket propulsion and personal shuttles to get back down to Earth. Normally, this amount of research would be a major grind for any other colonist, but for Tanks, who's a genius, it's more like a big speed run. Some time passes by. And finally, we research rocket propulsion. But Save Our Ship features a lot of preliminary technologies we still need to go back and research. We're going to be in here for a while, so I'll take off the EVA suit and just do some research. Sit down and relax. Tank's research skill caps out. The irony here is that spending a lot of time in space is more like spending a lot of time underground. You're tucked away in a shuttle and you can never get out. So a lot of his mood debuffs are resembling those of someone trapped underground. Yes, it is long, soul-destroying work, but it's a heck of a lot of research to get where we're going back down to Earth. I was looking for an architecturally fitting place to put our new shuttle bay. Uh, looks weren't really a main priority this time, but I guess next time, or when we come back into the shuttle, I'll think more about that. Nonetheless, we have an appropriate location for our shuttle bay, and we can put that just off to the side of our ship where we can launch shuttle pods down to Earth. It's a lot of component crafting, but I want to power this hull, as I intend to come back up to this ship later on and use it as a main base. This is the reason we needed this suit. Now we can seal in this new compartment and prepare a safe place for our new personal shuttle bay. And it's exciting knowing that whatever happens to us down on Earth, we'll always have some kernel, some base to come back up to in space. After my first personal mission down to Earth to scout it out, I intend to come back up to space to store my resources and take account of everything that I've found on the planet. But I'm going to need to defend it if I want to bring it back up here. That's right, we'll need guns. With work complete on the personal shuttle, it's time to start thinking about fuel. 
We'll need enough to get down to Earth, and for a return journey as well. I fueled up the ship, and then I started research on guns and rifling. Now we have the option of building ourselves an assault rifle. It's a day pregnant with expectation now that we're up to building an assault rifle. Finally, we've maximized the use of our resources to get back down to Earth. And now we can set ourselves up for an even better landing knowing that we still have this base in space. This is why we saved all these packaged survival meals. It'll be best to bring these down with us. Though our ship could be stronger, we'll need to gather supplies down on Earth. And now it's time to launch. We could go anywhere, but since it's december -y, we'll make our way for the mountains down on Earth. There it goes. And what's most exciting about this to me is that it actually seems to take an orbit into account. Like you don't just go straight down to the planet, but you need to rotate. But the planet's rotation is accounted for. Our ship arrives at its destination and lands safely. Now we can settle. The real journey begins. The number of flora and fauna right at our fingertips is overwhelming, and bringing home only a small sample, we could stake out a life for ourselves in space for many years to come. There are tribes people to trade with, and valuable resources we can't find in space. But if we can get up there, that's back where all the action is happening. But I think that tanks will be happy here for a little while. Well, I hope that this helped you learn about Save Our Ship. I've really liked the look of this mod for a long time, except it's been too complex and vast for me to get started, and the scenarios seemed a bit too unforgiving to just get started right away. There's nothing like taking apart a complex system, and deeply enjoying the learning experience.